So I'm sure that it's no secret. The Antminer L7 is one of the most profitable ASICs on the market currently. Now, obviously, as you guys might know, chasing efficiency and hash rate has always been a top priority as a crypto miner. Now, HiveOS just came out with a new firmware update. From what I'm hearing, you're supposed to be able to get lower wattage and higher efficiency on these units like the Antminer L7 9050. Somebody in my community actually told me that they're getting 9,500 average mega hash now on this unit. So I want to give my ASIC miner an upgrade, even though I just did the low power mode bitmain video last week. If you guys didn't see that, go check that out. I'll leave a link above. This is hopefully going to run more efficient than that and at a higher rate. Real quick, just before we do that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Muskminers.com. They provide a wide range of cryptocurrency services such as hassle-free server hosting, consulting, and competitive crypto mining hardware from all of the top profitable miners on the market currently. Musk Miners has been operating in the mining business since early 2017. They have now been professionally selling ASIC miners for more than two years and are 100% US based. Please go check out muskminers.com for all of your crypto mining needs. All right, so this is HiveOn.com. Now, if you guys are interested in HiveOS or a tutorial guide, please go check out my video. I'll leave a link above. For you guys to click on it's a complete walkthrough and it'll help you get started right off the bat now if you guys don't know what the asic hub is there is also a video for that that i'll leave a link above as well this is a monitoring system for all of your asics that you actually have and you can monitor them directly through hive os which is absolutely insane so go check that video out if you guys haven't seen that now this is where you can get the asic firmware clicking on this asic firmware tab right here it's high performance asic firmware and there is ways to tune it inside the software as well now if you scroll down you can choose your unit mine in this case will be the l7 if you want you can change the sense so you can just kind of see what your rate is and how much you're going to be paying per month to run this unit yada yada honestly those things are always off so i would just kind of take that with a grain of salt but right here you can see there's sd card content this is the zip file you can download to make this easier for you guys, I'll actually leave it down in the description below. And there's also an installation guide at the bottom of this page that I already have opened up right here. It gives you literally everything you need to know on how to install this on your L7. So it says important notes, the L7 firmware setup and configuration are not available through the HiveOS mobile application view only. So you can't do this directly through the app. You have to physically put this on a little micro SD card and put it into your machine. So it says for the initial firmware installation, you should use a micro SD file. If you face troubles with the ASIC miner start or receive errors status, please get in touch with our support team via b at hiveos.farm and provide a link for a particular worker. Now, you shouldn't have to do that. If you just follow these steps, it should work perfectly fine. Again, I'm gonna walk you directly through it right here in today's video. Installation steps, download the archived file, Right here, literally, you just click on this. You can download it this way if you'd like as well. Regardless, we got to get to installing this on the SD card itself. So let's do that. What you're supposed to do, formatting the SD card. To minimize the efforts for the micro SD card formatting, it is available to write the file with the help of Bolana Etcher, which is super simple. Now, everything I just read up above is if you're manually doing it, I don't recommend you do that. Just go download Balana Etcher if you guys have never seen that before. It is right here. You can download it. I'll leave a link to that website down in the description below as well so you guys can do that. Let's open this thing up and I'll just show you guys what it looks like. So right here it'll say flash from file and or flash from URL. So I'm going to click flash from file because I actually downloaded the zip folder yesterday. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to open it. Now, what I'm going to do is select a target. Now, I have a mini micro SD card on a USB stick in my PC right now. And it says right here, mass storage device, 31.3 gigabytes, which is the unit I'm going to be flashing. So I'm going to select that. And then I'm just going to choose flash. Now, once you get the warning that it's going to erase everything, just say OK and allow it to flash. These micro SD cards should flash fairly quickly, which is nice. All right. So now it says flash complete. I don't need any of this. I'm just going to X this out. You can click flash another if you have another one to flash, but I am done with that for now. So I'm hoping I didn't have to unzip that folder before I flash it. Either way, I'm going to see if it works or not. We're just going to hook it up and go from there. All right, so this is my Antminer dashboard inside the actual Antminer GUI. Now you can see I'm getting 6547 average hash rate. This is on low power mode, which is super efficient compared to the normal full bore version where I would get like 9,200 to 9,300 average on this 9050. And the wattage was like 3,300. And now with low power mode, my wattage is actually 2,230, 
which is significantly better. Now, going over to my Hive OS, as you can see, it even says down at the bottom, get the new Antminer L7 firmware to get a 30% hash rate increase, which is kind of interesting. So I'm kind of curious to see what the hash rate and wattage is going to be after we do this. But I need to shut this unit down. What I can say is I recommend highly that you guys go ahead and get the ASIC hub up and running before you do this so you guys can control your unit directly through Hive OS because it actually pegs the IP address with the unit. So when you plug this card in, you shouldn't have to put your farm hash in. As you can see right here, this is my ASIC hub and that's what I'm talking about. The IP address and this unit is already pegged to my farm hash and my ASIC directly through this ASIC hub. If you guys get stuck and you have trouble inserting the farm hash, go back to the instructions, the installation guide, and you can see exactly where it tells you to put it in. So again, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll try to give you guys a hand. Either way, let's go back to the Antminer dashboard. And I want to show you that right now it's actually in low power mode, but I do need to put it to sleep. So putting it in sleep actually shuts down the hash boards and it allows the fans to cool them off. So you don't just like unplug it and give it a huge shock. It will power everything down slowly, right? So it makes sense. Either way, now I'm going to go plug that SD card in and then we'll be right back once I fire it back up. All right, so I just plugged the unit in and it booted up. And as you can see right here at the Antminer dashboard, it says Hive on at the top left instead of Bitmain Antminer. You can click on the Hive OS setup and you can see where it asks you for your farm hash. So if you don't have the ASIC hub connected, I'm assuming that you will uh, have to go in there and put your farm hash in and then apply and save. But because I have the ASIC hub, I think it should be registering just fine as it is. Perfect. Let's go to my Hive OS page. I'm going to refresh this. I just want to see. All right. It's reading. Perfect. It says overclock profile is missing though. So what we're going to do is go back to the dashboard. You'd go to profiles right here. As you can see, it says auto tune not started. So I'm going to come down and choose the 9,500 for 3,500 Watts and click run tune and just see what happens. As far as I know, or as I've heard, these 9050s can now get 9500 mega hash as well as it was around 3100 watts for the guy that actually messaged me this so huge shout out to you you know who you are so i heard it ramp down and then it ramped back up and it says stop tune here so i'm just gonna leave it alone i'm assuming some tune log stuff will probably pop up here after a little bit but if we go back to our actual hive os dashboard it still says overclocking profile is missing and i clicked this drop down and it was right here at default I think I'm going to scroll down and click on the 9535 exactly like it is inside the Antminer dashboard and just click apply changes, I guess. Now it says worker updated successfully and that went away. So that makes me feel better. But either way, now I'm going to let this run for a few minutes. I want to see what the average hash rate comes out to. And I also want to check the wattage at the wall to see what that goes to. So we'll be right back. All right, so we're back. Now, this thing has been running for like a half hour. It shows an uptime of only two minutes right here, as you guys can see. This is kind of a pain in the butt, right? The profile. So mine, for some reason, it started the tune. And as you can see, it takes, you know, upwards of a half an hour. Maybe it was 40 minutes, I guess, from when I started the tune initially, or maybe even 50 minutes, closer to an hour. This um, couldn't decrease the voltage anymore. And it said restore to 1450. So... The lowest wattage I can get right now, I'll show right here on the screen as well. It's 3648. I took a picture of it. Kind of unfortunate because that's super high. But overall, my mega hash or the average hash rate, this has only been up for three minutes. But right now it says 9,959. Seems pretty good, but I don't like that. I need to get something more steady. So what I'm going to do is retune this. All right, so I stopped that tune and I restarted another one. This is about an hour later. Now, I actually put it to the 3100 watts for the 9 giga hash. As you guys can see right here, it says all is okay. Tune is done. Can't decrease the voltage anymore. It's set to 1400. So this is the wattage I was getting. It was 3184.5. It bounces here and there, but overall, that's a good uh, point to take it from. All right, so now looking at the average hash rate, you guys can see 9161.42. So let's see what the efficiency is on this unit. We get the calculator up. We're going to do, so it was 3184.5 
divided by the average hash rate. I'm just going to do 9,160 because it's still bouncing around. So we'll do 9160 just to make it easy. Equals, that's a 0.34 efficiency rating, which is actually better than the low power mode, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so now the only thing I can say here, like, yes, it might be more efficient, but on the other side of the coin, you're going to be using Hive OS and you're going to be charged to be mining through Hive OS. So at the end of the day, how much of a difference is it actually? Is it really more efficient if you're getting a fee taken out of that as well? Because if you look right here, let's switch to the big screen so you can see it says, do I need to pay to use the firmware? It says the firmware charges a dev fee. This is done in parallel mining without hash rate dips or suspension of the main mining process. Now the L7 isn't listed here, but I can guarantee you that it should be. It probably is for every one of their softwares. I could not imagine that it's not charged to the L7 as well. It says more details, right? Technically our dev fee is collected periodically. The essential difference is that. It says, A, we are waiting for the completion of work on the current share. B, when the switching to dev fee, the miner does not restart. So, I mean, that's a plus. Yeah, it says we wait for the ASIC to finish working on the share, then very quickly switch to the dev fee with low complexity and fast, small shares. We then switch back to the main mining process. As a result, there is no downtime in the form of waiting or restarting the miner, and there are no unresolved issues. But again, at the end of the day, Yes, it's more efficient, but minusing the 2.8% or almost 3% dev fee that they're going to be taking, does that actually offset the normal software? So you guys can let me know down in the comments below. I just wanted to at least let you guys know that you will be getting some sort of dev fee out of this. And actually, if you look real quick at the dashboard, let me big screen that again. You can see down here, these two other pools, this is four and five. I think these are the dev fees. So what I'm going to do is I want to leave this up in mining, obviously, for a later video. I want to see how many more shares are taking out of a day of my mining, right? Because 219 right now, they've taken 31 or 32 for each one of these, right? So that seems to be a significant amount at this current moment, but they may have taken their cut first and then I get my cut and so on and so forth each day. They probably do themselves first and then you know, kind of like getting interest for a house loan. Same exact thing. They're going to take the interest back first before they put it towards your principal, right? But either way, I get what's going on here. So hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. Hopefully you now understand that you need to flash the SD card, put it in the unit, and then it should be able to boot up no problem. You just have to put your farm hash into that unit or you have to have it on ASIC hub for it to register right into your farm. Now I have it on ASIC hub, so I didn't put my farm hash in. Hopefully that didn't affect anybody getting up and running. But either way, again, if you guys need to see any of those other videos, go click on that I tab up above and it will bring you to each one of those walkthrough videos for you. Please, guys, if you haven't already, go down there, hit that like button and consider subscribing. It's totally free. You can always change your mind. And until next time, hopefully you guys have a great day and I'll see you soon. Peace.